remembering our baptism, remembering God's promise to be present as we gather together in his name, we continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Psalm 139, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. O God, whose word establishes reality, we admit that we have turned from the face-to-face -face relationship of love with you for which we have been created. Sin infects us through and through, yet we trust in Jesus alone, whose life, death, and resurrection bring your healing power to bear on our grave condition. Hear us and heal us by your love, for Jesus' sake. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy over all that he has made. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, who invites your servants to hear when you speak, have mercy on us. Christ, to whose body alone we belong and not to our own selves, have mercy on us. Lord, who knows and loves us even before we come and see, have mercy on us and grant us your peace. Amen. You may be seated for next time.
If you haven't really dug into the words we just sung in our last two hymns, you be sure to look again at those hymns and review those words. I love those words, and it was such a joy for me to pause occasionally, kind of give my voice a little bit of a break, and I wasn't sure how well we knew this hymn, and oh man, you guys are singing it wonderfully, and I love this hymn. Dear people of God, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this morning, the second Sunday after the Epiphany, is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord God called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson for this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, starting with the 12th verse of chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. 
All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never! Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought, brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation study this day is our Old Testament reading. I'd like to again read from verse 10. And the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. Or as we read in NIV translation, speak for your servant is listening. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, open our ears and our hearts to your word. By the power of the Holy Spirit, your word calls us by name and to your family. Speak, Lord. Your servant are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends in Christ, God assures us, as we read earlier in 1 Corinthians 6, that we are not our own. 
We have been bought and redeemed in Christ Jesus. He made us and he has reclaimed us in Jesus. We belong to Jesus as one of the children shared. He died for us and rose again for us in Jesus. We're the people of God. As we read in Psalm 100, know that the Lord, he, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. In Jesus, we are the servants of God, the people of God. So as God's people of faith, as God speaks to us in his word, and sacraments will we listen listening is an important part of our life we know that it's important in a healthy marriage ask any spouse it's important at work at school and families in our churches but there are many voices and many messages who or what we listen to is also important if we're always listening to angry songs and angry this and it will affect you years ago i and my family had a dog he was uh, she was uh, half english springer spaniel and half black lab but it had the coloring of a Brittany spaniel and um, her name was gretel gretel would listen to the wind when the wind blew hard it would scare her she didn't want to go into her comfortable doghouse then she would go and hide under some outdoor steps that we had even in the rain if the wind was howling she would go hide under the steps and get soaking wet even though her doghouse was warm and dry oh what a sorry looking creature she'd be when we maybe come home from being away and here she always comes scraggling up from under the steps so afraid so wet just looks absolutely miserable maybe we dry her off a little bit we get her into our her doghouse maybe add some more straw or something there and and she'd be fine then but oh what a sorry soggy mess she would be when she listened to the wind and became afraid folks are you listening to the wind or are you listening to the word of god we as people often act in a similar way to the story I shared about my, our dog Gretel. We listen to the wrong things. Our imagination runs wild and we become afraid or bitter or maybe even mean. All because we listen to the wind and to our fears instead of listening to Jesus and his word and trusting him. Dear friends, are you listening to God's word? Are you finding shelter and security and warmth and peace in the presence and the promises of God? Or are you instead listening to the wind and being frightened and hiding under the steps in the cold, soaking rain? Will we listen to our fears or will we listen, or will we listen to God's word and trust in him? And I've said this many a time over the years. Fear is often a very unhealthy basis for a good and wise decision i'll give you an example recently i came across a note that i had made from a visit where a, a somewhat older lady had uh, visited me in my church office she told me in her shame that she had years before counseled her daughter to get an abortion she told me that she was so worried about the family finances and the reputation of the family but she also told me she was now so thankful that her daughter had not listened to her counsel and had proceeded to give birth to a beautiful baby and had raised one of the kindest and sweetest granddaughters this woman would ever know now this woman knew god's forgiveness but she still felt pain in her soul every time she saw and got a big hug from her granddaughter. This woman told me, I wanted this child to be killed. What would my granddaughter think of me if she ever found out? Now we thank and praise God that he is gracious and forgiving. We thank and praise God. There is forgiveness offered to all, whatever they have done, who repent of their sins and trust in Jesus. To all who repent of their sins and trust in him, God offers and gives complete and total forgiveness of all of our sins. That was the comfort of God's word that I could reassure her with. This was the message and promise of God's word. But sometimes in our guilt and shame, it can really be tough to hear God's word. And if we instead listen to our guilt and shame and stay only there we will despair who will we listen to 
the Lutheran hour this morning had a uh, Dr. Myers he kind of shared some comments at the end after the other speaker had spoken had some beautiful comments just on this very thing and how the guilt and shame have their place in other words driving us to the cross driving us again to here I can't stay in this place you know, this I I need to hear God's word on this and God's word is be of good cheer your sins are forgiven you and so they have their place but we don't dwell in the guilt and shame we dwell at the foot of the cross nothing in my hands I bring simply to thy cross I cling who will we listen to our Lord has given us his word so that we might know his kind and gracious will for our lives so that we can learn from the mistakes and troubles of people who have gone before us so we can share his loving direction and commandments with those around us yes this isn't easy I think of one music artist who four years ago finally was so distressed by the constant attack that she was hearing against the family and against the traditional family values and norms that God had given to us in his word. Actually, there was, I, I looked up some of the stuff, was it E, whatever, said, yeah, this, this, and, and they admitted it was an openly occult song, occult practice that they had. It was part of the Grammys, whatever, four years ago. And this person and, and her husband had walked out on this because she was up for some awards words that here's the article I found about it Natalie Grant who was nominated for two Grammys last night tweeted her excitement upon arriving at the event but soon made it clear that she left early because what she had witnessed conflicted with her Christian belief stating we left the Grammys early I have many thoughts most of which are probably better left inside my head but I'll say this I've never been more honored to sing about Jesus and for Jesus, and I've never been more sure of the path I've chosen. As God's people, we believe that God made us, redeemed us, knows us, and knows what is best for us. He has given us his law not to make our lives miserable, but rather to help keep in check the lawlessness of the world that is so prevalent and to guide us in peaceful living as his children in the midst of a fallen and troubled world. When we're faced with vulgar attacks against family values, when we have anti-family and anti-Christian teachings and practices literally almost being forced down our throat, we may wonder what should we do? And as I shared with the children earlier, we're not looking to get into a fight. We're not looking to get into an argument. I don't know that anyone's ever been argued into the kingdom of God. But we do want people to think, to reconsider. We want them to think about what they're saying and doing. And have you thought about what are the long-term consequences? Is this sure? Are you sure this is the path you want to take? In the face of such skepticism and unbelief, we need to be willing to take the approach that we read about in our gospel reading today. The approach of Philip with his friend Nathaniel. I'm not going to argue with you. Come and see. Come and listen to Jesus and his word. Come and see. Come and see the difference that God has made in my life. Come and see the difference God is doing among his people. Well, you Christians, it's a, that picture that you give of Christians, we might be able to say, I don't know what that is. If that's what Christians were, I'm, I know I wouldn't be a Christian then. But come and see what Christians really are about the love and care and compassion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the assurance of forgiveness that is ours in Jesus and purpose that is ours in Jesus. A movie that's coming out, I believe sometime in early March, is based on the story behind the contemporary Christian song, I Can Only Imagine. Does anybody even know what I'm talking about when I say that the song, I Can Only Imagine? A few hands, a few... What I've seen of this, the little bit that I've seen of it, you want to see this. And maybe you're going to learn to love that, that song like many others have. From the trailer that I saw, it seems that one of the big things that for the person who, kind of the story of behind the song, that affirmed God's love and power for the writer of this song, was the huge difference that God would make in the life of his father and apparently that's maybe a big part of the movie and maybe I just blew, you know, gave away the, you know, the whole point of the movie or something, but I want to see this one and I, it's kind of rare that I go to see but this is one that I think I'm going to want to see because I love that song. As we struggle with so many things, as we daily reflect the fact that living in the midst of the troubles and temptations of a sin-filled world is not easy, we will sometimes stumble 
We will sometimes doubt. In the midst of those things, may we also re daily reflect the hope, the forgiveness, the grace, the promise, the power that is also always ours in Jesus. To those around us who are skeptical and downright hostile against our Christian faith and values, let's not argue with them. Instead, let's say to them, come and see. Come walk with me and talk with me. Let's journey together as friends. And maybe you'll learn to see and hear what I see and hear. Come and see for yourself. I want to point you to Jesus. Part of our witness is that in those times when we must admit that we have also sinned and failed, and failed terribly, and God still offers forgiveness to all who repent of their sins and trust in Him as their Lord and Savior. God is merciful and gracious. Jesus is the one who sets us on our feet again. He gives us his word of forgiveness and peace. He gives us courage and willingness to admit our mistakes and to share our personal failures in those times in ways that help others learn from our mistakes, especially to help others see and learn how God has restored us and continues to love us in spite of our sins and failures. There is power and promise in God's word. And there is blessing in walking with God by faith. God still speaks to us through his word. Will we listen? Though we be in pain or overwhelmed by our shame, God is speaking. Will we listen? Samuel said to the Lord, Speak, for your servant hears. Can we say the same? Or are we instead not really wanting to hear what the Lord says? is saying to us two people might be younger maybe not so maybe they're thinking about social security and gee we would kind of lose some of the benefits so they're thinking of moving together and living as husband and wife even though they're not yet married they're not worried about their witness to others they're giving no thought to the example they might be giving to others who might be struggling with what is right before god the couple could rightly say well nearly everybody is doing this but they know that there are many Christians of all ages who honor God's word and direction about marriage. But they see no need to not just go ahead and just run with the crowd. And here is God who created them, who has called them by name and baptism. He wants them to listen to his word. He wants to assure them that he loves them. And though it may seem difficult and inconvenient at first, he wants them to know that he, the Lord, really does know what is best them he wants them to know or at least trust that God's way really is better it's better to first make your public commitment to one another as husband and wife a commitment of faithfulness till each to each other till death do thee part and then and only then to experience the special joys and the fullness of the wonders and privileges that God has ordained for marriage will they listen to God's word it can be so tough to listen to God's word at such times. Will they listen to God's word? Will you? Think of the hundreds of decisions that we make on a weekly basis. Think of all the various situations, temptations we face each week and each month. Do we listen to the Lord? Do we heed his word? Do we allow God to guide us? Do we join young Samuel in saying, Speak, for your servant is here. Your servant is listening, O Lord. Or do we instead join Eli's two sons who lived wickedly, who mocked God's word, who did not listen to their father's feeble attempts at rebuke? I'm certain they thought they were getting away with it. The offerings that were brought to the Lord, these two sons treated with contempt. And I read from chapter 2, verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he kept hearing all that his sons were doing to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who were serving at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Eli makes an attempt at correcting them, but the picture is, is, is of a father who never really disciplined his son and who does not now remove them from their place of service, as he should have done. And the sons Hophni and Phinehas, they continued in your sin, and you can read in 1 Samuel chapters 2 to 4 about the terrible end that came to them. God wants us all to hear and trust his word, starting with his called pastors and all his people of faith. But it also means that we act on his word and live his word. God assures us that he knows us in our situation better than we think he does. He tells us, I have something better in mind for you, something that will give you much more satisfaction in the long run, something that you will be able to feel good about and not have any shame about at all. There's so much hurt in this world. I'm trying to spare you, he's telling us. I'm trying to spare you. I want to spare you even greater hurt and harm that you are getting 
ready to bring upon yourself or your reputation. I have a better way. I love you. Will you listen to my word? Will you trust me in this? What will we do when we're facing the temptation of saying something hurtful? What will we do when we're faced with the temptation of responding in rage over how we feel another driver and what he has done, he or she has done to us? What will we do when we're tempted to escape from our hurts with harmful misuse of alcohol or opioids or other drugs? We know such things along with pornography, along with unhealthy friendships on the internet have destroyed marriages and lives. Yet you are tempted and it looks so enticing and like Hophni and Phineas, we think we could get away with it. What will we do? And this isn't just about temptations for the younger generation. Such things tempt people of nearly every age, young and old. What will we do? God's Word says it very well in Proverbs 3. It's kind of a theme verse for the school this coming this year as well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. We know it can be difficult to listen. We know we can often think that God's word was meant for others. My situation is different. Different rules apply to me. Let me share a story about that. We don't hear it much now, at least I haven't heard this much lately. But back in the days before cell phones, back when I was growing up north of Creston, Nebraska, and then north of Hayter, Nebraska, I remember hearing on the news the warnings about especially during winter we got blizzard conditions coming up whatever don't go out if you do make sure you have the tire chains on and make sure you got food and water and warm clothes and all this stuff and it seemed like every year there would be at least one if not two if not even three stories that's at least the way i remember it where there'd be somebody, maybe a group of younger kids who kind of went, oh, we don't need a coat or anything else. We're just going over, you know, a couple miles over to our friend's place, whatever it might be, and out kind of in the country. They didn't heed the warning, didn't heed the advice. And then later, we'd hear about how they were found frozen. Similar warnings are given today. Things like don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, don't get into a car with someone who has too much to drink or is under the influence of harmful drugs. But people still do, and a majority of the accidents and deaths that take place on the highways are the result. In John 8, verse 47, we hear Jesus say, Whoever is of God, hears the words of God. Dear people of God, hear God's word for you this day and every day going forward. Words that give guidance and direction. Yes, words that show us our sins. Words of law that crush us and and, and, and show us the guilt of our sins. But also words that proclaim gospel. Good news of the salvation, the forgiveness that is offered to all and is offered to you and to me in Christ. To us all, starting with all the pastors. May we listen to God's word that leads to repentance and admission of our guilt before God. To us all, may we all, starting with all the pastors, listen to God's word that proclaims forgiveness and grace to all in Jesus. May we hear God's word that affirms for us each day, I have called you by name in baptism. I have washed away your sins. You are precious to me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He assures us, I have a purpose for you. Trust me in this. Follow where I lead you. Listen to my word. May it always be so among us that we can indeed continue to join young Samuel in saying, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to all eternity. I invite you to stand and join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we confess our Christian faith together. I
minute for us tying in with our special school week that's coming up a week from now good morning I am David come the principal at Trinity Lutheran School and I am blessed to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning I am here to share with you more about our school and National Lutheran Schools week in Hebrews 13 verse 8 we read Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever it's still about Jesus as it has been for the past 135 years and continues each and every day at Trinity Lutheran School. It's still about Jesus gathering in his house of worship, in prayer, in devotion, and in praise. It's still about Jesus, the theme for National Lutheran Schools Week 2018. God's Lutheran School at 1200 North 56th Street in Lincoln, Nebraska, and our Lutheran School, the Congregation of Trinity Lutheran in Lincoln, Nebraska, continues to serve students and families in the name of Jesus each and every day. Our goals remain the same, providing a Christ-centered education that develops the whole child and prepares our students academically, develops their faith, and promotes service. We cannot do this alone. It is through the grace of God, the support of Trinity Lutheran Church, the efforts of our dedicated faculty, staff, and volunteers, and the partnership we have with our families. 
In all of this, it's still about Jesus. Trinity is not alone in these efforts. As National Lutheran Schools Week kicks off next uh, a week from today, our Early Childhood Center is one of 1,150 early childhood centers. Our elementary school is one of 793 elementary schools. Lincoln Lutheran Middle Senior High is one of 86 high schools. And Concordia University, Nebraska is one of 10 colleges and universities that are all part of the Lutheran Church, Missouri City. Through these Christian education centers, hundreds of thousands of students, their families, and their communities are impacted by the love and hope of Jesus every day. Our school is growing. It's an exciting time here at Trinity. Our early childhood is near capacity. Our K-5 enrollment is up, and families are inquiring about Trinity weekly. I would encourage all of you to tell others about our school. Encourage them to schedule a visit to learn more about Trinity Lutheran School. A quality education is affordable, and we want to reach as many children as we can. Thank you, Trinity, for playing such an important role in making a Christian education part of the ministry here. Your financial support, volunteer hours, and most importantly, your prayers are greatly appreciated. Trinity Lutheran School is privileged to minister to families at various places in their faith walk, some hearing about Jesus for the first time through their children that attend our school. As we move forward in ministry, we ask for your continued support and prayers. We have a great number of activities planned next week to celebrate our Lutheran school and have some fun with our students as well. VIP Day is on Friday, January 26th, and we invite members of the congregation to join us for chapel and serve as a VIP for some of our students that may not have a VIP in attendance. Our students will be singing in worship at both services next Sunday, and our fifth graders will be assisting in worship as well. We celebrate service anniversaries of Jolene Beckman, our church secretary, John Will, our school bus driver, and Carissa Hewn, our fifth grade teacher. We will also have our chili and cinnamon roll event next Sunday following this late service. I would also like to extend an invitation on behalf of Lutheran Schools of Lincoln to hear Dr. Micah Parker speak at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, January 24th at Lincoln Lutheran. Dr. Parker will share a powerful message that reaches people of all ages. It's an event you won't want to miss. You're all a very important part of Trinity Lutheran School. Our members of Trinity are always welcome as guests at our school and know that we as a school keep you, the members, and the ministries of Trinity in our prayers as well. God's blessings, and remember, each and every day, it's still about Jesus. I just want you to know that's not the second time I've heard that. It keeps getting better. I know it's the same words, but it just keeps getting better. Let us stand as we continue in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God who shadows the silence, open our ears like Samuel's to listen to your living voice as you speak to us through your word and in the Holy Sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. God who shatters the silence, you have told us that we are not our own, but we were bought with a price. Not with gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Help us to live as your redeemed and beloved people and to share your love with others in our various callings and vocations, inviting them to come and see Jesus, who loves us and gave himself for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who shatters the silence, your word is like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Open the hearts and the mouths of all your preachers to bring forth the fire of your word in both law and gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who shatters the silence, we ask you to speak healing over all who are sick and suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray, Lord, that you be with those who have suffered loss. We think of Lori and, and Donna and their family as they have suffered loss. Lord, be with them and be with others who have suffered loss and are still mourning past losses. Lord, comfort them with the peace, the comfort, the eternal promises that are ours in Christ, the comfort that only you can give. Lord, we pray also for those struggling with illness. We pray, Lord, for Walter Waddell as he 
and Fran Kniep and Leela Wagner and Helen Miller and Corrine Bartles and Roy Beckman and we think of all the many others we would name before you, members of our family and friends and acquaintances and all who are on our prayer list. Lord, all of these we bring before you, asking for healing and strength for them, trusting that your word accomplishes the purpose for which you send it, whether now or in eternity. We trust you to bring your healing purposes to completion in all lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also rejoice with those celebrating special celebrations. We ask you, Lord, to be with Jacob and Marcia as they're celebrating their 46th uh, wedding anniversary. Lord, we pray that you be also with Aldo and, and Denise as they're celebrating their 15th wedding anniversary. Lord, be with all these two couples and be with all the families and, and marriages of this congregation and, and the friends of this congregation, Lord, and of our school. Lord, grant them your peace. Help them, Lord, to daily know and hear your word and daily know and reflect to one another your love, your grace, your promises. Keep them all, Lord, in your care. We pray also, Lord, for our servicemen and women. We think especially of Craig and Brad and Suzanne and others that we have in our prayer list. Lord, we pray that you be with them and those in law enforcement and first responders, that you would keep them safe in their work that you would, and, and whether it be each night or whether it's after a term of duty, that Lord, when their work is done, you would bring them safely home to their families and to their homes. Keep them, Lord, always in your grace. Lord, we also pray that you guide and would lead us in the boulders meeting that's coming up immediately after the service, that in all things that are said, and in all decisions that we make, that you would be praised and that your will would be done. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns in communion and love with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and look upon you with his favor and give you peace. <laughs>